All right, so we've talked about large frame guns. Now let's move on to something slightly different, obviously concealment style weapons. I classify them as medium frame to small frame weapon systems. Couple factors. Um, first, obviously lifestyle, like Travis said, is, is going to play a huge part in the type of weapon system that you actually carry. Some of the weapon systems, um, dependent upon your clothing that you do choose, if you're in a hot climate, you might have to wear shorts or that, that might be what you wear most of the time. Um, and you might end up going with a pocket gun. Um, couple things to think about when running a gun this small you, <clears throat> it's better to at least have a weapon on you but can you really run it and can you really control it uh, for some people hand size is another factor some people have such large hands that even though this would be a great weapon system for them to carry um, their hands are just too large to really operate it also as you are employing this weapon system generally we run a thumbs forward position as you can see if i tried to run a thumbs forward position on this i'd end up charring off my thumb if not shooting it off uh, and i have just regular regular hands so you might end up having to dump this thing down to get it out of the way so for me this wouldn't be a, a weapon system that i would choose but maybe to a narcotics officer um, who doesn't have many options that's a backup that would be a good that's not backup a, that's, gun. that's not a concealed carry gun that's something that you go as a last resort because you know, and I like to choose a gun that I can employ at 50 yards if I need to, and, it, and it's, um, that's my carry gun, that's my concealment gun. And I, I don't feel comfortable doing that in that capacity, so that's where I would carry in that other I, I mean, I know I don't. I, I definitely know I don't. I know some people carry it as a primary weapon system, but I think you, you need to just consider what Travis is saying. Um, what is your ability to perform with that particular weapon system? Uh, triggers obviously play a big part. We're back to a revolver again, so we're running a double action. You also have the ability on this particular revolver to thumb cock it and put it into a, more of a single action to get a little bit more accurate shot. Um, this is a 357 Magnum, so distance wise and ballistics wise, uh, you're definitely going to get a little bit better result out of this weapon system and distance even though it is a, a smaller barrel. So it might be that happy medium of, of kind of finding what works best for you. Now, when you go over to something like this, one of these little 38s, this is what they refer to, uh, this is a Smith & Wesson Airweight. It's very, very light. Now, some of the controllability because of the weight factor, like this weighs a lot, so therefore the recoil doesn't seem as bad. When you start shooting Stand defensive, up. Yeah. ammunition out of a, a frame like this being an airway it's going to be more noticeable in recoil and, and, and that's something that you need to consider as well however this thing is so light that you're going to take it with you everywhere you're going to always want to have it on you because it's not going to feel like it's on you and i think that's where it comes into play of utilizing a weapon system that that's small that you are going to carry every single day now this weapon system might be great up in the mountains or if i'm hiking or something like that where maybe it's not uh, a defensive situation in regards to another person attacking me but maybe even an animal mm -hmm. of some of, of some sort mm -hmm. now you start getting into these little revolvers and your sight pictures really are drastically affected because they are so small. So for this particular weapon system, this one actually has a red dot laser on it, and that is to help you see at night or in low light conditions, which, which can actually aid you. In broad daylight, it is pretty much going to be more intuitive as you drive out with this weapon system and then hopefully you've established good fundamentals. And talking about that weight a little bit more, what I like to do is, is I like to carry an air weight or an air weight like that, like that Smith & Wesson air weight there. Uh, this is actually my gun. So I'll carry this gun with a 357 Magnum in it, but I've trained to this weight. I know what it's gonna do. I know the recoil and I'm very consistent and proficient with it. Um, but you gotta keep that in mind if that's a little bit too much gun for you and you'd rather just carry it because it's convenient because of the weight then you gotta find a happy medium there. You gotta find a balance. So keep that in consideration. This one's an air light and it's slightly different where it's double action, but you can also thumb cock the hammer. There are no laser grips on this one. Those are generally added features. If you choose to utilize them, you'll also notice that it runs a fixed sight. So as far as the rear sight goes, there's no adjustability there. What you get is what you get. So hopefully, hopefully from the manufacturer, the sights are are pretty on and, and that's going to be the, the difference in uh, quality and the money that you spend. You could spend 
$200 on a revolver and then you wonder why it doesn't work after you fired a few hundred rounds through it. Or you might wonder why this Smith & Wesson costs $800, but you can go out, you can shoot it, you can run it, you can practice with it, and it works every time. So there are obviously a lot of factors that play into small frame guns. Now you start getting into a, a weapon system like this. This is a Smith & Wesson m and 45, and it's a little bit bigger. I would more classify this as a medium frame weapon system, but this is that weapon system that Travis is talking about where I feel confident in making a possible 50 yard shot to either suppress, if not neutralize. I would feel more comfortable. I know Travis feels more comfortable carrying a weapon system like this because if that worst case scenario happens, I don't want to go, you know what? I wish I could do something. I wish I could uh, possibly help out in a situation or protect my family, especially if it's my family on the line, and then realize that I really don't have enough gun to do it. You don't have that much of a consistency issue going back and forth between a, a medium sized frame to your full frame that we're normally used to running the, the standard MP9 and then running to this. So I feel very confident with that um, consistency wise. You get into a little bit smaller frame like the uh, the smaller MP series, the compact, you know, this is a great gun. I can work this gun pretty good. It's still pretty consistent. It's built kind of the same, but it's still. I, I have that confidence issue, that consistency issue out at a very far range. So I wanna, I wanna make sure I'm using this in the right capacity, for probably more of a backup system at this point. Thanks. One of the things that you'll notice with subcompacts like this, and it's, it's that trade-off. If you notice, without the magazine in it, my little finger right here hangs off the gun. It makes it a little challenging when you go to do a speed reload on this weapon system. And as you insert the magazine, a lot of times you also insert a, a little bit of flesh and that can become a problem as well. Um, but with this one, I think this one's, uh, I forget how many rounds, I know it's over 10. So I at least have 10 rounds of nine millimeter. You'll be surprised. Um, some of these in comparison, this weapon system right here, this thing's going to recoil more than this. Sometimes as you go smaller, it will actually, as far as follow-up shots, it's going to, you're gonna feel more recoil in that weapon system. Definitely, even though this weapon system right here is a 380 and this one's a nine millimeter and you would normally think that being a 380 is probably gonna have less recoil, being in such a small, lightweight framed weapon system, it's actually going to jump in your hands a lot more, especially if you carry defensive yeah. ammunition. This little Caltech here kicks more than my my J frame um, 357 to me. And it's uncontrollable because of the size and the weight. And then that means it's not going in. That's in, that in balance. Your holster. That's that balance I found. That's that's not it. What would you rather carry? I mean, this gun that is lightweight. It holds. Uh, I don't even know how many rounds it holds. Six or eight rounds or carry this thing that can carry that much more rounds that is more consistent to what you're used to shooting. So I'd rather go with the latter. On a lot of manufacturers, there's little knurls, like for instance, on this Glock, we have a little, uh, we have a little speed, <clears throat> speed plate on the bottom of this Glock that we've, that we've designed, and it allows your fingers to actually wrap the bottom of it. That way you get a little bit more bite on the gun. Now, of course, on a reload, you still have to get that little finger out of the way, but when you're getting on the gun in regards to a grip, it allows you to maintain a better grip and better control of that weapon system. So there are always little things, obviously accessories that you can put on these, on these weapon systems to make it a little bit more bearable for you. Uh, when you're dealing with, say, Glock and the M&P line, for instance, on this nine millimeter M&P, this one's a nine millimeter. If I'm carrying my full size nine millimeter on an emergency, I could utilize those full size mags for this gun as well. So if I was a cop carrying this as a backup to my, in a sense, primary weapon, which would be a full size, um, I could immediately still utilize, still utilize Grab a couple of full-size mags. Keep the them mags in, on my belt keep them that I'm already carrying. Or the glove compartment. Have yep. some extra ones in there if you're running concealed. Let's talk about the 1911s. This one's a Kimber lightweight frame. Generally, if you build this all out of steel, of course, it's going to help and aid in the recoil. But then again, the weight factor plays, a, plays another issue. So I might have to... Uh, 
understand that this thing's gonna recoil a little bit more, but again, if I carry it every single day, then that's the benefit, especially in a time is life situation when I need to count on this thing, I'm wearing it. It's not still in the car. I think that's the, the, the thing. Some people don't take it as serious, and it's like, hey, I'm just gonna run into the store for a second. So I'll just leave it in the car, and then all of a sudden, when you're getting your Slurpee, and somebody's robbing the place, you really wish at that point you'd brought it in with you. Um, they're lightweight, obviously a big big boy caliber. Again, thumbs, gotta be very careful. Mine stopped just short of the muzzle. If you end up getting a, um, uh, if you're the type of person where body-wise, physique-wise, you can hide. I knew guys that their concealable guns are full-size 45s, but I can tell you they generally will have a bigger frame than me, right. and they can conceal it without printing, which is obviously extremely important. Or we'll, or we'll dress to the gun, which is what I like to do. And I'm a big 1911 fan, but uh, I won't find myself running this type of platform. Even though it's a great uh, race car class, uh, high-performance gun of all these categories out here, it still doesn't fit my category, doesn't fit my preferences, my consistency to what I would want uh, out there on the streets. All right, this last weapon system that, I, that I'll grab is kind of a unique one. It is very, very small. I generally, and it's probably the wrong terminology, I end up calling these like gut guns. You know what I mean? <laughs> really, because I, I'm not gonna sit here and, and try to take a, more than a, a seven yard shot with this thing. Hopefully, uh, on this weapon system, the only thing that I can do is thumb cock the hammer. That's how this one operates. You'll notice there is no safeties here. There's nothing that protects that trigger. The only thing that protects you from the gun going off is the fact that if you pull the trigger, it won't go off until you cock the hammer. You have to be very, very careful when operating a weapon system like this. For some people though, this is all they carry. Um, hopefully your engagements are only seven yards or less and seven yards is really pushing it. Just remember there's a huge variety. Um, these are some of the weapon systems that are either ours or some of the industry partners provided for us. There are many out there. I take concealment guns and so does Travis as there are many different types out there. The most important thing on a concealment gun, you're generally carrying it on you, thus the word concealment. So you better damn well make sure that that gun is gonna run and perform because the likelihood of you using this in a defensive situation is much greater than just a fun gun that's a large frame gun that you don't really carry on you but you just shoot at the range. Those are two entirely different things. I'm more likely to employ a medium to small frame gun under dynamic stress while I'm at the mall than I am a large frame gun. I'm gonna take my time picking out a small frame gun or a medium frame gun that I'm gonna run on me concealed because of the importance in knowing that chances are for me employing it, I wanna make sure I can hit those other factors that Travis talked about. Consistency, being able to still manipulate that weapon system, getting a performance out of the gun that I need uh, in a time is life situation. So those are the important factors, but those are the important factors to us. Again, we're not absolute about anything. So yeah. what you choose is up to you, but the only thing that we can stress is making sure that it's consistent to your large frame, and then not only is it consistent to your large frame, but it's something that you are gonna carry on you. Well, like I talked about in the class, you know, there's that concealed carry lifestyle that you have to understand first before you even start going here. So before you start picking up a gun, find out, learn, educate yourself about the lifestyle, and do it right if you're gonna do it. Don't be a liability to society. Be an asset to it, like I said. So that is huge right here. This is step one, finding the right gun for you. Don't be lazy because um, you wanna carry something lightweight or something that looks cool. Um, do it right. Carry it's something practical. Practical, yeah.